Greetings, Soulswind here, and welcome to Let's Play Cooking Simulator. We're back here in the base game, and this is an add-on episode. Having covered more than 250 episodes on this game, I've read many comments on the game regarding various aspects of the game, and I thought maybe it'd be good to address the top 10 things to note when playing this game, or even before going into this game. The top 10 things that are picked out are pertaining to the base game. The DLCs include the Food Network DLC, Cakes and Cookies DLC, Pizza DLC, Shelter DLC. Each of them has got different game mechanics that makes them a little bit more unique when compared to the base game. So the 10 things here pertain mostly to the base game but are also covering the fundamentals of playing Cooking Simulator as a game itself and should apply quite significantly to the DLCs. Now there's more than 10 things that I wanted to talk about, but these 10 that I've picked out are more important to ensure a smooth gameplay. The others not as important, so they may or may not be covered in a separate video. We will be progressing through this episode by preparing two dishes and it will help us transition from one discussion topic to another. We're now in sandbox mode, so there's going to be quite a lot of spoilers, especially with the food shelf, the refrigerator, and the liquids and spices. They're all available right from the get-go, although not everything is displayed from the beginning. That brings us to the first topic, buying things in Cooking Simulator. The foods, especially meats and other things that require refrigeration, can be found in the refrigerator fish, seafood, meat, and some of these things that are already given but free of charge. So if we need more of these liquids, we'll have to buy them elsewhere. Now it's of course free of charge since we're in the sandbox mode. There are two more trays around here or two more drawers around here providing even more of these food items that require refrigeration. Not all the meats or refrigerable items are in here, but we'll hold on to that. Herbs, fresh herbs, can be found here. These liquids and seasonings and whatnot are only here because of sandbox, otherwise these shelves are usually empty. We've got fruits and vegetables. They fill up as we progress through the career mode. Not everything that we need to use can be found here. Actually, there's a few more here, but it's repetition. Onion and onion. Potato, potato. It's quite good though, this is quite realistic. Anyway, so we have got beer here too. A barrel of beer, dark beer, light beer. So how do we buy the rest here? The box, click on the box and the rest of the items will be available, such as the Tortellini, seen over here. Some of them are available, given to us for free. These are all available. But the rest will have to buy them here. Some of these jars too, gotta buy them here in the products. Got spices, these cans over here. Got the liquids, these bottles and more on the top row. We've got utensils such as the frying pan which we'll need one more of because why not? Maybe not but whatever. <laughs> and miscellaneous where we can find more barrels of beer. So we buy them as a barrel and they're somehow not in the liquids segment of this purchase menu. Oh just an add-on we can buy plates from here too, just by clicking to buy the plate, and we can even return it, but we do not get a refund. From what I understand, the next time we get that same plate though, we don't get the cost deducted. Plates are also available here. I would highly recommend taking the box from here Actually, any of these boxes can allow purchasing, but take one of the boxes 
and bring it over here to our workstation so that we can buy things easily and transfer them to the workstation easily within reach when we are preparing the food. Even if we were to move it over here, we can only buy one thing at a time. Say we want to buy the trout. We can only buy one at a time. There is no way to buy multiple. And that brings me to the next topic. We can only hold one thing at a time. One fish. One box by pressing the E key. One pan at a time. But one pan also means a pan of items. Or rather, one collection of items. So we hold one at a time, but that includes one container of items. One pan of trouts. And one pan of many different things, including salmon. And we can bring them here. That goes for the big pot, as well as other containers such as the bucket. As long as it's a container, it can hold numerous other things, as long as they fit in the container, of course. So how about we take the bucket, and we try to bring some of these items with us. We'll need sunflower oil, we'll need salt. Okay, let's let it topple inside. We'll need black pepper. Topple inside, please. And dill. I think that's all. Seems good enough. Then we can transfer everything over. And put this aside. We can use a different container and holding the mouse cursor over the item, scroll the mouse wheel to select multiple of the same items. And they will go into the container or jump out because of uh, collision boundaries <laughs> of the items. I believe it's the collision boundaries of those items. How do we get these items out from the pan? We go into the next topic, pouring. We can pour food items or liquids. Food items can be poured by holding the shift key and moving the mouse cursor to position the container from which we are going to pour over the location that we're pouring to, holding on to the right mouse button to rotate the container, move the mouse slightly forwards and backwards for tilting the container like this or left and right to tilt the container like this. So we can pour everything out onto the workstation. For liquids, we can hold the bottle or the source of the liquid, left click on the container, Holding on to the left mouse button this time round to tilt the bottle as you can see on the bottom right hand corner of the screen and slowly move the mouse downwards until it begins pouring. Nudge the mouse to pour smaller amounts of the liquid. So we can pour liquids like this. Some of the other liquids begin pouring right away. What do I mean by that? Let's get one of these, maybe the jelly. I think that'd be good. Bring it over to here. This pot is empty. Click on this. See? As soon as we click on it, it pours immediately without the need to tilt the jar. So be very careful when dispensing anything from such jars. Highly advised to get a separate container with nothing in it before pouring from such containers. Then this can be combined with other foods as necessary. 
There are other ways we can pour things, or rather transfer liquids. Firstly, let us get a liter of water. Uh oh, slightly more than that. Whatever. Now we put this here, and suppose we want to transfer from this to this. We can just do it like this. Click on the source. Click on the destination. There's that red dot. And we can pour this. Hold on to the left mouse button to pour or to tilt the pot. Without holding on to the left mouse button, we can move the pot. Right click to exit the context menu. We can also use the ladle. Click on the source and the destination to transfer. It is possible to pour from the ladle. Hold the shift key to move the ladle to position. Right mouse button to tilt the ladle. But this is a lot more time consuming and dangerous. Not recommended. Instead, simply use the ladle. Whichever quantity it may be, click on the source, click on the destination to transfer all the water or the liquids over to the pot. The ladle is also very useful when transferring a mixture or a soup or a gravy to a dish that's already prepared without getting the soup or the liquids on the other ingredients in the dish. Click on the source. Click on the destination. The salmon fillet does not get affected. If we were to pour, however, the salmon fillet will get the water on it. See? It goes onto the salmon fillet. Is that all? No. There is one more option we can use. That is the pipette. The pipette is for dispensing liquids onto food items, but can be used for transferring as well. Suppose we want to dispense 5 ml of the sunflower oil onto the salmon fillet. See? Simply hold the pipet, then left click on the sunflower oil, the source that is, and left click again on the destination. This goes for containers. A little change though, for the container, we'll need to right click. And it will empty everything that's in the pipette. So ensure that we have the correct amount in the pipette before emptying the pipette. Because everything will go into the container. What is bad about this, however, is that if we already have food item in here, and we want to transfer a liquid, right click on the plate for example, it's going to get the sunflower oil onto the salmon fillet. This will not be as good as using the ladle. Otherwise, we'll need the plate to be without any other food items. Now, to get salt and black pepper onto the salmon fillet, that is not pouring, but more of like seasoning. Seasoning is different from real life in that we can just like season like this, and we can change it to 5 grams. We just need 5 each of salt and black pepper. Sometimes if uh, it's not centered properly, some of them can get on the side. So we want to change it to 1 gram and just add it back here and it'll be 5 grams. Now, we don't even have to spread out the salt. So for example, let's do 5 grams one at a time. That's 5 here. And then, oh my goodness. <laughs> And then, put another one. Now, even if we were to put it on the same spot or a different spot, it's the same thing. It's still five. Same goes for this one. Any seasoning.
It's all the same. We don't need to season the underside of the fillet either. Narrow items have got the seasoning dropping off the sides. So be more wary about this. Like if you were to go for five of these, there's a higher chance that it will only have four. So always check and then add whatever is missing. Even if you were to switch it to five, you can see that only four got onto the fish. Exit the context menu if anything. And then add one to compensate for what's missing. Again, as mentioned, it doesn't matter which part of the fish we're seasoning. It's applied to the entire fish. It still affects the entire fish. And it seems like we got 5 onto the trout despite seasoning the tail end which is thinner. Anyway, just note that there's a higher chance that it will fall outside of the food and we need to add more. Now here's a potato. If you were to season something and then cut. Even though we added the seasoning to only one spot, 10 times, if we were to cut it, if our cut is good, we get a half-half, 5 grams and 5 grams. The cut is 77 grams and 73 grams total 150. Here's a potato. Now season this again. Ten times on the same spot. Suppose this time round we mess up our cut and we cut instead of a half we cut on the side it will divide accordingly so the salt will be seven here and three here because the proportion is two thirds here one third here how about seasoning an entire pot of liquid all we have to do is to add the seasoning to here we're adding 20 grams this becomes a mixture and the seasoning is already in the water. How do we find out about the seasoning in the water though? Okay, let's just have 500 ml here. Maybe 100 grams? So this is like ratio 1 to 5. If we press E to taste, You'll notice that water is 83.3% and salt is 16.7%. This number can be obtained by taking 100 grams divided by 600 total. So 500 ml of water and 100 salt. 100 divided by 600 gives us 16.6 .6 recurring 7. 500 divided by 600 is 83 point recurring 3. We can only taste mixtures to find out the seasoning. But after tasting though, note that an amount of the mixture will be removed. In this case, 2 ml. Taste that again. The proportions should still be the same. But if we were to move our cursor away and check, another 2 ml has been removed. Now for cooking. Cooking items is quite simple. Just add the item to the container, the pot or the pan. It actually doesn't seem to matter. It matters more whether there is liquid or not and what sort of liquid is in the container when putting the food there and cooking. Also, the appliance used will matter. In this case, we're gonna pan fry the salmon fillet for 60 seconds. When we switch that on, okay, I'm gonna start the timer first. If we switch that on, the green progress bar will fill, but we don't know how long it's gonna take. The recipe says 60 seconds, but we need to keep track of this. And once we move our mouse cursor away, it's gone. So it'd be really good to set up a timer. As you can see here, it's moving. How to set up the timer? Hold the timer, press the E key, and then use the W, A, S, and Q key to choose the time. And remember to press the E key to set up the timer. 
to stop the timer, pick up the timer, and then press the E key and reset this to zero. And that should be fine. If not, we can also click on this to stop the timer. All right, this is about done. Okay, we'll leave it as it is for now. We can also cook the food on other surfaces. If there is no liquids needed, but a pan is required, we can use this one, the griddle. It works the same way as a pan without the liquid. We can use the grill to grill items. We can also use the deep fryer. Just put this in the deep fryer basket bring it over here, fill it up with oil, and then switch it on, and it will be deep frying. Switching it off immediately stops the deep frying, despite the oil being hot. So this makes it a lot simpler, but lacks a bit of realism. Still, it's fine though. I don't find this too much of a problem. Empty the oil by pressing this button. There's another thing we can do that is baking. We'll need a baking tray. And then we'll put the food on here. If we ever want to bake other foods, however, we'll need to space it out like this. And then put it into the oven to bake. Ninety seconds. Without thermal vision, we don't know how it progresses in there, so it is necessary to have a timer. Press the E key to set up the timer, and the timer will run even if we don't set down the timer. One more thing about cooking though. If we were to take a large number of items, and we were to put it over here and fry. These onions that are not in contact with the pan at all will not be cooked. And you can see the color differences, okay? The onions that are not in contact with the container that it's supposed to cook in will not be cooked. So it is important to make sure that every food piece is directly in contact with the pan. And if you were to hover a mouse cursor over the pan, you notice that the progress bar is not filled. However, checking each of these individual onion, you notice that they are cooked, but these are raw. Now the timer's up. Open. Switch that off, and you notice that these are properly cooked. We could just leave it, forget it, step away, and return to cooked food. There is no other way, because we wouldn't know how they're progressing otherwise. Unless we have the thermal vision, but then we'll still have to check it very often, right? Having a timer leaves it totally out of mind until the timer rings. Food does have temperature, as shown in the thermometer, and will lose heat over time. Alright, more things regarding cooking or heating items. Now I've added another 20 grams of salt in here. We're gonna get four potatoes. Let's bring it over. With containers that have got liquids in here, even if the food is not in contact with the container, such as the big pot, but as long as you hear this, as long as it's in contact with the water, can you hear that? Yeah. Now it's not in contact with the pot, but it's in contact with the water it will be properly heated. Two minutes. You'll see the progress being the same. Now, some foods need to be swapped over on its other side, depending on the recipe. Not every food needs to be swapped over. Let's suppose this is still hot, and we don't have heat-proof gloves, then We'll need the spatula. Click it. Hold on to the shift key. Hold on to the right mouse button. 
and then flip this around and hope for the best. This is one of the most finicky game mechanic in this game. I highly recommend getting the heatproof gloves perk as soon as you have a perk available. How convenient is the heatproof gloves? Suppose this is still a hot food. With the heatproof gloves, we can then pick it up directly by clicking on it, hold the shift key, hold the right mouse button, move the mouse to flip it over to the other side, and when we are done, middle mouse button to drop it down. And that's all, instead of using the spatula. It's so much more convenient. Okay, this is done. Also to note that foods in the oven doesn't need to be flipped around. Not that I've ever noticed in any of the recipes. Once they're done, they're done. Food on the stove, on the griddle, as well as the grill. Some of them need to be flipped on its other side. The oven and the deep fryer, I've not seen any requirements for food to be flipped over. Okay, this is done. Now before we serve these, let's continue preparing the trout dish. We need to cut a lemon. So let's go into a little bit of uh, cutting. Where is the lemon? Over here. Now for cutting, it's one of the most frustrating thing in this game. Why? I highly recommend the perk Steady Hands. Now without Steady Hands, cut and it falls apart like this. So if you want to cut it into a quarter, it makes it really difficult. Also, we cut almost around the center, but look at the distribution. It's a 48 and a 32. That's bad. That's like a 40-60 distribution. We're back with one more lemon. Click again like this to enter cutting context. Now, if we were to hold on to the shift key, steady hands, and click. You see? While holding on to the shift key, the lemon does not fall apart allowing us to cut a plus cut to divide them into four quarters. And it is still not falling apart until we let go of the shift key. There. Then exit the context menu. 24, 19, 15, 22. This is quite bad. This is quite bad despite us cutting almost in the middle. But that is kind of real, it's just that it can be a little bit more forgiving by allowing us to see what will be the weightage distribution as we move the knife along. It'd be great if we have a preview of what the cuts will be like before actually clicking to cut. And we're back with the carrot. Cutting is a little bit trickier when the food item has got distinctively different width or length or whatever. Maybe four quarters. So this is around the middle. We should get heavier weight on the right side compared to the left side. Now let's take a look. 17, 11, 18 and this being the smallest piece out of all of these available, as you can see here, visually it is the smallest, and yet it's the one with the most weight. So this is something to take note of. Anyway, we should cut a good lemon. So let's try again. Somewhere around the middle. And somewhere around the middle, I think. Parallax errors. 21, 18, 19, 22. Perfect. And we have another lemon over here. I gotta address one more thing. Suppose we cut like this and it falls apart. We can always change its direction like that. Or change its orientation. And continue with the cutting. This is going to make it a lot easier. See? 21 and 22. That's a very good cut. Twenty-one, eighteen, 
21, 16. Okay, that's not so good, but fine. <laughs> now it comes to serving of the dishes. Firstly, we get plates from here. We can get a big plate or a small plate, it doesn't matter. Some of the items are simpler, just take it like this. And maybe two of these. And we can just serve it, there's not much plating to do. Just go to here to serve the food. Suppose it's served, over here. However, some food require a little bit more seasoning, so how about we take... It's a little bit burnt because they're cold already, so I just <laughs> reheat them in the oven a little. Bring it over to here. Now, something to add on to the seasoning though, is that if we were to like season here onto the plate, we need 5 grams of these. Oh, hang on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, one more. If this is our serving plate, we will get in trouble because the horseradish is here, which is unneeded. So, if the plate or the container contains anything, hold onto the plate, click on the bin, and whatever's in the plate or the container will be emptied into the bin. Now, put this back here with the horseradish. How do we plate it? Given that there is collision boundaries and whatnot, if we were to just like pick up everything, we can pick up everything and it's gonna be quite messy looking. We can try to plate it by using the standard move and rotate. We're required to put in some of these parsley. But note that as we add the herb, these things begin to shift around a little bit. They collide into each other and nudge each other out of their original locations or positions. And therefore, even if we were to try our best at plating, it's not going to do much in terms of the final aesthetics. Because it's going to be affected by how the other things are pushing them around. Furthermore, there is no clear location as to where they're gonna land. We can only make an estimate as to where the food items are going to land. We can even lower the food down by holding the shift key and then holding the left mouse button. Like this. It can even tilt the plate. While holding onto the plate, just pull everything back up. And you can see that the food, they're nudging each other. Because of all the limitations regarding plating of the food, we can be very thankful that the looks of this plate does not affect the scoring. The positioning and the orientation of the trout, the lemon, the parsley, they do not matter. Let's serve this one to this place. And let me prepare another example to show you. How about a burger? Hmm, I wonder what's gonna happen. And you see, it just messes up everything and that's it. Is this good? Okay, good. Now this one on top. And then we move. As we walk, do you notice that it still topples, despite having properly stacked everything? It still topples. Okay, just cheese and meat. Let's see. Can't even see it properly. Cheese and meat. Now, let me just click without holding onto the mouse. Click. Seems like it's not that bad. Let's take a look. You can see it's already tilted. Not sure why there's passive movement without us doing anything. I guess it's to simulate realism. A human breathes and therefore the plate moves. I guess so. I mean, every item does move like that. So yeah, there's that. The conclusion is that food arrangement does not matter. Each dish we serve is scored based on the cooking technique, the cutting technique, the ingredients included, as well as other processing steps involved in the preparation of the dish. The final aesthetics and presentation does not affect the scoring. Yep, that's it, that's plating. 
Now, we're done with the day. There's still so many leftover food here, and there's costs involved, also time involved, seasoning, cutting, etc. What if we want to preserve these things? They will not go bad as long as they're uncooked if we were to preserve them overnight. All we need to do is to leave them where they are or get a container. Get the cabbage, the onion, cheese, and we can store them later. Of course, it'd be good to store them in different containers depending on what we need and what we don't need. And then put them at one of these locations or in one of these cabinets. There's a lot of cabinet space available as well as more of these spaces under our work counter. Now for these lemons, we know they're good cuts. What we can do is simply prepare them in advance. We know that we'll need 20 gram cuts of them as well as three parsleys. So we can prepare these and just leave them on the table. Whenever it's ordered, we just need to prepare and bake the trout and then we can serve them. So this can be done during the preparation phase or the cleanup phase. The sour cream can be kept overnight as well without it changing. It's still as it is. It can be used as if it's fresh. So these foods can be kept overnight without problems in the game, not real life. Wow, suddenly the kitchen has become very dirty. What happens then? How do we clean? Now cleaning is uh, somewhat different. Okay, we see broken plates here. We see broken bottles and broken jars around here. Well, generally it consists of picking up these items one at a time except for the liquids and whatnot, and then tossing them into the bin. Or using a uh, container, such as the bucket or any of the other containers, to mass select all of them and throw them into the bin. That's picking up items that need to be discarded. These things, they actually do not matter. Like, they're usable in this game, but let's just say we need to discard them. This is how we discard them. For the surfaces here, we have sponges. Do we need detergent? Not exactly. We can just like move it over here. But that's it. We can't really do anything. We can't really click on the detergent, right? No, it doesn't work. We can't use a detergent. So how do we clean? Well, move over to here, wherever it's dirty. Press the E key, which will zoom in. And then we just have to wipe like this. Wipe it clean by moving the mouse. When we are done, right click to exit. The floor can be cleaned in the same way as well. So does the sink. But the sink, we cannot point it down here. We gotta point here and then try to clean. Okay, we gotta try to clean like this. So this side of the sink, wherever it's not visible, is not cleaned. If we were to clean this side of the sink, we gotta go here and then click on this way and then be able to clean this side of the sink. Okay? The plates don't need to be cleaned. Any plate, let's say uh, this bowl, let's just pour something else. Do we still have any liquids in it? I think so, okay. You just put it here. If it has got anything, we can click here. It's gonna go back. We take it out, it's empty again, okay? However, if it contains food, We can't return it. All right. Now, this on the floor can also be cleaned using this mop. So we can use a mop, click on the mop, and then this is just simply not clicking anything. Just move the mouse around to clean. It is somewhat finicky, but it works. So that's pretty good.
right? And when we're done, just walk back here and click here, and it'll be okay. However, it is still dirty. We have got this thing, this wand thingy, which I can't pick up. Let's try again. Okay, go into the perk, deselect and select it again. Now it's pick up a ball. <laughs> Hocus Pocus. Go to here. Press the E key. It's all done. Clean. Absolutely clean. Table clean. The floor clean. Everything clean. And that's it. This is a perk to be unlocked. Some of these appliances will get damaged and will need to be repaired because of wear and tear. Look at this, 65%. And it's done, no more percentages. How about this one, this one nothing. We've used this, how about this? Yeah, this is 98%. Just use the mouse wheel to choose which one we want. But it's all free, so it doesn't matter. And it's instant here. It doesn't even take time. In career mode though, it takes time and cost. Here in sandbox mode, it's instant and free. Now that's it. So in this episode, we talked about the 10 important things to note playing the base game. I hope this episode will help improve your gameplay experience of the base game that is Cooking Simulator. I'm still considering whether to make these types of videos for the cooking simulator DLCs. If you find these videos helpful, do let me know in the comments below. Well, that's it for this episode though. Thank you so much for watching. That's all I have for now. Have a nice day.